Essay point number 14. Tithing is not taught to the church in the New Testament. Tithing is not taught to the church in the New Testament. What we need here is a consistent principle of interpretation that allows us to move material from the Old Testament into the New Testament and have it stand there in a legitimate, for a legitimate reason. I like the way that Martin Luther and John Calvin did it. Martin Luther taught that in the old law, under the Mosaic Covenant, unless it was an eternal moral principle, something that went beyond the law, it was not to be brought into the New Covenant. And those items that were strictly cultic ceremonial statutes of the Old Covenant law were not to be brought into the New Testament. Therefore, Martin Luther rejected tithing. Matthew 23, 23 reads, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These you ought to have done, not to have left the other undone. I ask you to look at the text and ask yourself, was Jesus talking about something in the Old Covenant or something in the New Covenant? Was Jesus discussing matters that solely belong to the Mosaic Law or matters that belong to the church also? Is the church being addressed in Matthew 23, 23? The text itself says very plainly that Jesus is talking to the scribes and Pharisees. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! They were hypocrites because they were the accepted interpreters of the law in the first century in Jesus' day and age, and they had abused the law and made it a burden instead of a joy for Jewish Christians and other Jews under the law. The text says that the Pharisees and scribes taught that we should be, that the those under the law should tithe men and anise and cumin. These were small garden herbs, spices, that were normally grown on the back porch or in the backyard. And they were not, not included in the original interpretation of what tithing was supposed to include in the Old Covenant. Matters of the Law. Matthew 23, 23 clearly says that Jesus was discussing matters of the law. And those who teach tithing, when they quote this verse, very often leave out those four words in order to make it appear that Jesus was given instruction to the New Covenant Church when he was not. Jesus was born under the jurisdiction of the law. He lived under the jurisdiction of the law. Jesus died that he might redeem those under the law. And in doing so, he redeemed everybody else also. The context of Matthew 23, 23 is found in the first three verses. Jesus says, he spoke to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Therefore, do everything they tell you to observe. Jesus was speaking to his Jewish disciples, those under the law, about the hypocrisy of the scribes and Pharisees. He was not instructing the church on how to run its matters, its affairs. Jesus made it plain why the Jewish disciples should obey the scribes and Pharisees because the text says that they sit in Moses' seat. Because they sit in Moses' seat. And in no way whatsoever 
does this mean they are authoritative as teachers for the Christian church? Therefore, that is why Jesus said you should obey what they tell you to do. In Matthew 5.24, Jesus said, First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. In Matthew 8, verse 4, Jesus said, Show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Jesus could legitimately, under the law, tell his Jewish disciples to go to the temple when he had healed them or when they had a dispute among themselves and show themselves to the priest. But Jesus could not tell his Gentile disciples, whom he had just healed, to go to the temple. Neither could Jesus tell his Gentile disciples to pay tithes, because they would not have been accepted, even if they had attempted to do so. But you ask, what about Acts chapter 2? In Acts chapter 4, aren't these examples of tithing in the early church? My answer is no. If you're honest with the text, you will admit that Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 4 are examples, first of all, of communal living, and second of all, of free will offerings to the very best. In those chapters, Everybody gave everything they had into a communal pot, and it was laid at the feet of the disciples, of, of the, the apostles, those who were the leaders of the church. They were not giving tithes and offerings. They were putting into the community chest, and the early apostles, the Bible says, equally distributed them among everybody in the church as they had need. This is not an example of tithing, nor is it an example of what any church that I know of practices today. Yet these texts are used to say, yes, the early church taught tithing. Turn with me to Acts chapter 21, verses 20 and 21, and look at the text. Look, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe and they are all zealous of the law. And they are informed that you are teaching all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses. Acts chapter 21 is 30 years after Calvary. Yet the Jewish Christian church in Jerusalem had been taken over by the legalizers, the Judaizers, those Pharisees who said the law was all important. And it is evident from this text and the preceding events the pre that these people were still supporting the law in every area. The text says they are all zealous of the law. And friend, if you're honest with the verse, you have to conclude that if these Christians were tithing at all, they were tithing to the Levitical system and not to early church leaders and apostles. Otherwise, they would not have been accepted in the Jewish sanctuary when they went to worship if they were not bringing their tithes to the Levitical system. Therefore, Acts 20, 21, verse 20 and 21, in my opinion, prove beyond a shadow of a doubt 30 years after Calvary that the early church was not paying tithes to the apostles and the early church leaders. 